Hey guys, today I have a very special video for you. I have these two very rare guns, and also I want to talk about the man who owned them. The two guns I want to show you, first of all, is a Walther PP. This is a Tyrolean shooter prize, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, but there's only about a hundred of them made, 17 known. And the second one is one of a kind because it is an American Eagle 30 caliber Luger, but it was owned by Howard Hughes. Now, let's talk a little bit about the man who owned these. These guns were owned by Denny Begro. Now, we've been doing business with Denny for probably the past six or seven years, um, and he was very much like me. First of all, I have the best job in the world. He had the second best job in the world. He owned a company in Colorado called Soaring, and they have the largest zip line in America, maybe the world, but it's over one mile of zip line up in the mountains of Colorado. Then he had a zest for life, and you can see, uh, this is a video from their website. Uh, people, families just love to come out to Soaring, and it's in the Durango area of Colorado, and they would just spend the day together and laugh and have a great time, and Denny loved that. He also loved dogs. Uh, and he loved Lugers and Walthers. And most of all, he loved his family. Then he stopped by just recently because he would winter in Florida, where he was in Colorado. There was no access to get uh, up there other than by helicopter or by this special steam locomotive, which was part of the experience. So you either had to go by train, special locomotive, or helicopter in, it was so remote. So of course, he couldn't stay there all winter long. He would head down to Florida, and on the way to Florida, he would also always stop by the legacy office and try to talk me out of some of my prized possessions. And that's the one thing about Denny that I will remember most. He was regularly bringing up, what are you gonna, he would watch one of my videos, the engraved PP that went to a Luftwaffe ace. He would regularly say, are you ready to sell it yet? And I'd always tell him, not yet, Denny. So the last time I saw him was the, the, just this year when he stopped by on his way down to Florida. He was there for Christmas and on Christmas day, he was taking, Christmas morning, he was taking gifts to see his son and his daughter-in-law and his grandchild um, and Denny and Judy, his wife, were hit head-on by a car that swerved out of their lane and ran into them head-on. Uh, Judy sustained serious injuries and is still recovering. Denny uh, broke his neck in three places. Uh, he has been in intensive care for two months, so from Christmas Day until February 29th, uh, he was alive uh, with a ventilator, uh, paralyzed from the neck down, and passed away on February 29th. Our condolences, uh, prayers, and well wishes uh, go out to his family, and they have set up a GoFundMe page, you can see a link below, uh, to help with some of the medical bills. If you're so inclined, uh, take a look. Now let's talk about the guns, because that's what Denny would have wanted to do. He'd say, okay, enough of that, let's talk about the guns. First, the Tyrolean. So the Tyrolean Shooter Prize, they all fall in the same serial range, and I did a previous video about this. Uh, Tyrol, it's in the Austrian region, just north of Italy. So that's the Alpine region. We recognize it from the Ricola commercial with the big horns, and we also uh, recognize it from the Lederhosen, the, the boys in their, their shorts and suspenders. Spenders, and they also were pretty famous for their target shooting, skiing, target shooting. It's still an Olympic game. And all the way back to 1939, they were doing shooting competitions in the Tyrolean region. And they had held this at least once a year, maybe more than that. So as part of their prizes, I, I don't know if it was just the first place or first, second, third place. All I know is they ordered about 100 pistols and rifles that went to the winners of the different competitions that were held. The first time I saw this Tyrolean Eagle, I was actually at a gun show and I picked, the, I picked this up and I said, there's, there's just, I, there's some kind of marking on this and I didn't understand what it was. Uh, here's actually a, one of the pins. This one is from 1941. They gave out these pins in 1939. I used to have one for every year, 39, 40, 41, all the way up to 1944. So they held the competitions even during the war all the way up to 1944. This is one of the pins and that is considered a Tyrolean Eagle. 
And that's what you see there. Now that Tyrolean Eagle is the same Tyrolean Eagle that you will see on this gun. Here's a better look at one. This is one that, I think this one I own. Uh, the, the Eagle is a little better struck. Pretty much all of the ones I've ever seen, the Eagle is not struck really well, so it's sometimes hard to see. But it's even better to see it on the rifle. Here's a 22 caliber rifle. You can see on the receiver, it has the same Tyrolean Eagle, and that was given out as a shooter prize um, or the pistol. I probably would have picked the pistol. And with only 100 made, these are extremely rare, very valuable, and highly collectible. Uh, they do command a premium, uh, and you can check it out. I believe this one's already on our website. If it isn't sold already, it should be on our website. And again, this belonged to Denny, and we're selling it for the family. Okay, you thought that was exciting? Denny was also a Luger collector, as am I. I should mention that he got that Tyrolean Eagle from me. That was one of the ones that he talked me out of. He also bought this from us, and this one is one of a kind. I mentioned it was owned by Howard Hughes. Now, I've talked to some of the Utes, the youngins who work here, and they're like, Howard who? Uh, Howard Hughes, they actually made a movie about his life, The Aviator. Uh, he was one of the most famous early billionaires. Today, billionaires are a lot more common, but he uh, was a billionaire in the 1930s and a movie producer. He made movies and he made millions off of movies. Then later when the war broke out, he, being an aviator, he designed planes that were used by the US Army. He had patents on all his designs and made millions and even into the billions of dollars. He became famous in all the tabloids, having dated a lot of the famous actresses, having made movies. Some of the movies became very popular. One in particular, Hell's Angels. I thought Hell's Angels was a motorcycle movie, and it is, but there was one made before it. The original Hell's Angels were pilots in World War I, you know, the guys in the biplane. Here's a uh, DVD of the Hells Angels movie. I think it's been Hollywood eyes because I don't think her dress was ever that revealing in 1930. Also, the movie's completely black and white. Um, I just, I watched portions of it, but you see Howard Hughes, uh, Jean Harlow, uh, she was an early movie star, and she became, she actually, she didn't become famous from this, but she made this phrase famous, and I believe it's in this movie where she says, why don't you hold on while I put on something a little more comfortable? She said that uh, back in the 1930s, and that became a famous phrase. People tell me that all the time. Uh, but this is uh, the movie, Hell's Angels, and in the movie, they use this Luger. Um, now, we have a sworn affidavit that this Luger, it's not serial number 7888. You can check it out right here. It is 7888. It's an American Eagle. You know from the dish toggle, it's a model 1900. So we have a model 1900, probably made in about 1904. Um, and it's in 30 caliber. It was, uh, it was imported into the United States and owned by Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes, when the movie, uh, movie was a blockbuster, I don't know if it won uh, any awards, but they said it was a blockbuster movie in 1930. Uh, and again, they're fighting the Germans, but in this case, it would have been World War I, not World War II. Uh, they're fighting the Germans. Well, maybe the best thing to do is to show you some of the documentation. We'll take a look at that, but uh, let me finish looking at the gun first. You can see it does have a wood bottom blank magazine, which is correct, nickel, plated tube, and all of the numbers are matching. Uh, this is not numbered, but all the numbers are matching. Again, a 1900 American Eagle. Now, without any attribution, this is probably a $4,500 gun. With the attribution, it makes it one of a kind. And let's go over and take a look at some of the documentation that comes with this gun. Okay, I've already mentioned the movie itself, but of course this was in black and white, and I don't remember this scene in the movie at all. And there's the main actor who I never heard of, Ben Lyon and Gene Harlow. Uh, this is, I think, Howard Hughes with Gene Harlow. Uh, he's a much younger Howard Hughes. Interestingly, if you watch the movie, The Aviator, he was extreme OCD. So I can't imagine if she touched him on the hands that he didn't immediately go and disinfect. Uh, and he was an aviator and designed aircraft. Uh, here's pictures of him later in life. 
Um, and again, he got a lot of government contracts and patents and uh, was, a, was revolutionary in some of his designs. Now, here's the important part, the uh, sworn affidavit uh, that this, this American Luger, and there's the serial number, 7888, was given to my stepfather, Joseph March, around 1931. Movie was made in 1930, uh, 31. It was presented uh, by Howard Hughes as a token of appreciation following the completed production of Hell's Angels, for which my stepfather wrote the screenplay. According to what my stepfather told me, the pistol was used in the execution scene when one of the captive American pilots was forced to shoot his own brother. Now, we went back and looked at the uh, video. Uh, I guess they didn't call it video back then. <laughs> we watched the movie, and it's toward the end. The two pilots are being held captive. Um, and you see in this scene, the one American pilot is brought before the German officer. Now, he looks a little bit like Colonel Klink from Hogan's Heroes, but he does certainly look sinister. And that's the way you want to portray uh, the Germans if you are between the wars. Um, and so here is the gun just down in the corner of the shot. You can see it. And now you can see where our American hero, he picks it up. And the German then tells him, don't worry, it's not loaded. And the German says, I will let you live if you shoot, shoot your comrade. So he somehow doesn't make any sense to me in terms of the screenwriting. Uh, but he says, OK. Uh, and he goes in and turns out his fellow pilot is his brother. And you can see here in this scene, he shoots his brother. His brother dies in his arms. And then those dirty Nazis, oh, wait, they're not Nazis. This is World War I. Those dirty Germans take the main character out, uh, and they execute him after they said, if you shoot your brother, we'll let you go free. Dirty Nazis. And this was the gun that was used in the movie. And again, it was owned by Howard Hughes at that moment in time, but then given as a gift to the screenwriter of the movie. There's one other document here. Uh, the sold to Thomas Whiteman. That's me. I bought this back in 2017 from History Hunter. It was actually an auction, and I was surprised to get it as cheaply as I could. Uh, this auction was put on by Craig Gottlieb, if you know him. He's uh, appeared in several History Channel and Pawn Stars and things like that. He valued the gun at about $50,000. I got it for far less and sold it to Denny Begro a few years later. So this is now being offered. Again, it's on our website, one of a kind, way less than $50,000, uh, but a very famous uh, gun from a movie of years gone by. I should say days of yore or yesteryears. Hey, thanks for watching. That was a video that I really wasn't looking forward to doing, but I'm glad we did. I hope I don't have to do it again. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And if you know of anybody who likes some high-end guns, here's two really nice ones. It's an American Eagle Luger, but it was owned by Hugh Hefner. No. <laughs> it's one of a kind. What's his name? Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. Oh my gosh. He was a movie director too.